England 2, Slovakia 1, and the Three Lions are through to the quarterfinals of Euro 2024, and they're going to play Switzerland. Gareth Southgate, it's very easy to just beat up on him. So I'm just going to tell you what I feel like he did right in this game, and then I'm just going to go through some moments in the game that I thought were very crucial. First of all, he started Kubimano in midfield. We were all saying you need to start a midfielder. At least he's not going back to that Trent experiment. I kind of feel bad they, did, they didn't give Conor Gallagher enough time in that position because he only literally played a half there other than coming on as a sub. Because I feel like he would also do a really good job in the middle of the park. But Kobe Mano just makes you a bit more mobile. Um, he's very good when you give him that role of holding with someone else, right? So that he's not doing it alone. So I think that was a good call in terms of starting Kobe Mano. He drove the ball forward quite a bit. Um, I'm also glad that even after, at halftime, if he was to be taken off, I wouldn't really complain. He was one of the players who was not really, really good at halftime. But I think his performance between the 45th minute and when he got subbed off, I think around the 60-something minute, 65th or something like that, he really showed you what he can do. He was driving with the ball more into the box. In the first half, only Bellingham had entries into the opposition D, to the Slovakian D. Second half, Kobe Maino was doing it. <clears throat> So he showed you what he can do on the ball. He also showed you that there's a bit of an experience there. If you guys remember some, uh, I think it was in the second half, when uh, England got a free kick and then he decides to just take it early while the defenders are not even looking. Stones and Gehi are not even looking. Um, I believe it was him because it looked like Saka was on that wing as well. But I believe it was Kobe Maino. Please correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, but I think it was Kobe Maino. Um, and then the Slovakian player had a chance to score and uh, like from halfway and they didn't manage to take advantage of that. But um, I believe Kobe Mayno made them, they looked much, much better. Even though they still looked like they didn't have a plan, they looked much better. What Kobe Mayno come coming onto the field, what he does is that England necessarily don't have a plan. So they're really relying on their big players to come up and fill in the voids, right? So... In the first half, another thing I feel like they really were not, they didn't do Kobe Mino well for like a spell of like 15, 20 minutes. They were letting him stay in central area. So Declan Rice was going up, but you see when he plays with Arsenal, when he goes up, there's a plan in how he's going to fall back. And there's a plan in how you're going to cover Jorginho so that he does, he's not isolated. Kobe Mino kept was always isolated. And if you guys saw, there was one moment where, again, this one, you have to give props to someone who's played under a manager who's very attentive to detail. Kyle Walker noticed Kobe Mino was actually just alone by himself. So what did Kyle Walker do? He decided to invert, and he ended up being a central midfielder for about five minutes, right? Just to kind of show Slovakia, yo, you can't attack through this area, I'm here. And that kind of um, made Slovakia not attack through the middle because they're starting to do that a lot more. Slovakia are very narrow. When they are pressing, they will press with, uh, with one player up front. But then when the ball goes to the wing, it will be another player who comes forward. So it looks like they're pressing with two. Then once you cross the halfway line, it's like they push back to a back five. Um, and the, mid the midfield, there will always be three who are very close. So they're very, they're very innovative in how they press. And they're pressing in a box pattern, right? And you find that because England don't have plans... And they cannot attack to the left because their left winger cannot cross a ball with his left foot. Or the left foot back cannot overlap and whip in across to the left. Slovakia were very comfortable to stay narrow and push them wide. And when it goes to Saka's side, they double up. When it goes to the other side, they are a bit slower to go to, to their right side because whoever is on the left side for England will not cross the ball. I, I was quite impressed with how Slovakia stressed England. And England were absolutely stressed. Um... And um, yeah, so Kyle Walker just decided, yo, I'm going to take over and, and make sure Kobe Mino doesn't look bad, you know. And those are the moments of, of I'd, I'd, really, I, I'd call it brilliance, but just of experience. Having people who play at the highest level with the best coaches can read these moments even before the coach sees it. I don't know if it was a coaching thing, but even when he did it, he didn't look like he, he didn't look like he was directed. I feel like he just went and did it, right? Um, so yeah, starting Kobe Mino was a good idea, but... He didn't, Southgate didn't cover him as well in midfield. Another really good thing Southgate did today, bringing on Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony changed this game. Ivan Tony came with a minute to go or something, and um, he was just, he just caused trouble. Like, he just caused trouble. He got an assist for Kane's goal, which was just uh, the first minute of extra time. And he was now stressing the defenders because Kane doesn't do that. Ivan Tony wants to muscle up with the defenders, he wants to fight with the defenders. The Kobe, the Ivan Tony sub was a very good sub. I thought it was late, 
But in hindsight, it was timely, right? Because they ended up winning the game. All right, something else that um, he did that I was a fan of. Um, to begin the second half, he now he just told Kobe Mino and the midfielders, guys, run into the box. I, I'm still not a fan of how Phil Foden is being left out on the wing. Like, your best player cannot be that far out from goal, right? He, he needs to be closer to the D. He needs to be closer to goal. He needs to, the cent- to be in the central areas. They're not innovative in how they're sprinting in. So, again, props to Southgate, <laughs> which this one, he doesn't really deserve it. But he has he put enough smart players on the field at that moment to know this is where we're going to take advantage of certain things, right? Then... Um, Something else that he did from, f- I think, the 80-something minute moving forward. Any free kicks, penalties they got, uh, any free kicks, corners they got, they now put Gehi right under the goalkeeper's nose. And Gehi was causing problems. If you look at um, the first goal, he's the one who wins the header uh, from the throw-in, goes to Bellingham, and Bellingham, what a finish overhead. Like, that, that is just class. Um, the guy disappeared the whole game, but he appeared when he was needed. Um, I mean, football is a game of moments and sometimes it's those moments that make you special. You're standing up with one minute to go. 95 minutes added, it was like 94 something, right? Literally, let's just call it the last minute of, of gameplay. Mark Gehi was right there. Wins the header, Bellingham over, um, overhead kick. And then um, the second one was Kane's goal because it was a free kick from Cole Palmer. Again, the subs made a big difference, especially for this goal. Cole Palmer was a sub. Whips the ball in. Gehi is under the keeper, right under the keeper's nose. Uh, the keeper wins the ball, but he puts enough pressure because right now they realize Gehi is a big threat, is a set-piece threat, and you can't just let him be in the area. So the keeper is coming, the defenders are all converged towards Gehi. He punches the ball, obviously, I don't know what Eze is doing. Eze is just does his own thing. And then, um, um, but he manages to <laughs> get contact with the ball, hits it in. If Ivan Tony, another sub, headers across and Kane finishes to make it 2-1 and that was in the first minute of extra time. So the two subs that were really, really timely for me were um, Cole Palmer and Ivan Tony. Or let me say the crucial subs. Ivan Tony particularly more. I was, a, I was a big fan of bringing Eze on, but one thing you realize is that there's two people I really want to shout out. I'm an Arsenal fan. I'm not being biased. I'm actually just being for real. There's two people I need to shout out, Saka and Rice. Saka and Rice, um, Saka, first of all, played right back, right wing, right wing back, uh, <laughs> left back, left wing back, in central midfield. When they switched to a back five, because he played the whole 120, they switched to a back five. He also played as part of the back five, covering Walker when Walker went forward. Like, Saka played everywhere today. And this is just a sign, like, Dude, this man sacrificed for the team. Today it was about the team. It was not about being flashy or anything. But seeing that now he has played almost, I think he was averaging like 60, 70 minutes per game in the first two games. And then now he's played 120. I think Palmer will start the next game. And I think that would be the smart move because you need that energy. Or if Saka plays, you just take him off after 50 minutes in the next game, right? Because you want to keep that threat that he has. Um, just he's a smart player. Like he knows how to adjust to different scenarios on the field. Palmer knows how to play a certain way. I feel like Palmer um, doesn't give you that width. If you think about it, Palmer is not necessarily a winger. Palmer is, even at Chelsea, he's always behind the striker somewhere, right? Like, he he's not naturally a winger. But we all classify him as a winger because everyone has decided to do that. But he likes to cut in a lot. He likes to be very close to goal. England are not playing that way. England are not playing close to the goal. So they're playing much further away. So if if... Saka is a much better player further away than Palmer is, even though Palmer, once he gets into the D, much more dangerous player in my opinion. But Saka's all-rounded play outside is what England need at this point. But he can't play the full 90 or even close to it, right? He has to rest 120. And then Declan Rice. Rice was immense. There were times he was just covering at centre-back. He was like he was everywhere. He was everywhere, covered every blade of grass. But again, the one thing about Southgate is Southgate has managed to make every single player, their weaknesses I'm seeing in my own Arsenal players, I didn't even know they had. Their weaknesses I'm seeing in uh, Gehi's game that I didn't even know he had, right? Man gets a yellow card three minutes after the game starts. That was more of an individual error, but there's just moments where he looks shaky, but he always relies on his on his, on his his brilliance, on his pace. If you guys realize, um, even the goal, the goal that came in, Gehi kind of missed the header. 
But I think Gehi was suffering from something because he had his shoulder strap, uh, shoulder strapped, and he has his left arm actually bandaged. So he's he was going through a lot in this game, but he managed to stay on even despite getting that quick early yellow card. Managed to stay on and um, and actually do well, right? Um, the other thing that was a bit concerning to me is that at, when we it was after ninety and it was extra time, Gareth Southgate didn't address the team. Like he talked to one or two guys, and then it was the assistants that were doing it. There's an interesting article that I read on Twitter, rather a thread. So it's someone promoting a book. I can't remember what it was. If I find it, I'll let you guys know. Um, I think I bookmarked it, but I'll let you know. So what he was basically saying is that he went and studied different coaches and how they react just before they go to a penalty shootout. So he covered um, Van Hal, for example, who just goes, gives you instructions for one, one to two minutes and you guys go into the field, which means they had discussed these things prior, right? They had already discussed different scenarios. So it's just a matter of telling him, okay, now we're going to scenario one. Almost like an F1 car, where it's like, the you lose your strat B, strat C, like these different strategies. Depending on the scenario, we go to that strategy. Then there's someone like um, DJ Deschamps, who admits that he never even practices free uh, penalties. So when they go to the penalty final with Argentina, you see the Argentinian coach, it looks like the, everything is organized, but Deschamps is just like they're chilling, right? Like whoever doesn't even know who's going to be the first penalty, fifth penalty. All they know is that Mbappe is going to be somewhere in their taking. Whereas for Netherlands, in that quarterfinal game at the World Cup, this is the previous World Cup, not Qatar, the one before, where Tim Krul was brought on and then saved the penalty. You can see the how organized people are and all scenarios have been thought about, well thought of before the game even starts. So seeing him act like that, just like a few hours after reading that uh, thread, was quite fascinating. So I'll find that thread and I'll share it with you guys. Just remind me in the comment section. Um, I'll I'll see how I can do it. Then um, moments in the game that I feel like were really big. Um, uh, 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 what? Obviously, going up, if if Slovakia managed to go up 2-0 from the mistake, the quick free kick that England took and it fell to a Slovakian player who took a shot from halfway and then barely missed. Uh, well, not barely, but missed. But definitely, if it was on target... Uh, Pickford was all getting there. So that was a turning point because I feel like at 2-0 two, 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 two down, England would have just... I don't know what Southgate would have done, to be honest. And then um, another turning moment for me was uh, of definitely Bellingham, like the 90-whatever plus, whatever goal, because right now Southgate would have been fired. Southgate would be interviewing for the United job. Um, that's definitely number two. And then another big one for me was... Um, there's one I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, it was the England were two one up, and then Slovakia got the ball from on the side, and it was Slovakia's the new number ten who came on Tupta. I think that was his name or Tupta, something like that. And he crosses the ball, and um, man, why am I forgetting the right back's name? And I keep talking about him. Um, uh, mm, mm, mm. Pekarik. Pekarik is in the at the far post, about to. Like the ball was just coming and that he was going to score that. If it wasn't for Eze, because at that point Eze was playing left back, Eze just comes out of nowhere and he flicks the ball before the before Pekarik. Pekarik is the Slovakian right back. And it comes off Pekarik for a goal kick. But that was a crucial, crucial moment. So for me, those are the biggest moments of the game. And I feel like in those moments, they all went in, in it went in England's way. Moving forward, you're going to be playing tougher teams. If one of those moments or all of those moments go against you, how do you react to it, right? Obviously, if the first one goes against you, then it's harder for the subsequent ones to happen. But these are moments in the game that you have to factor in. Like, he has to sit down and be like, okay, Sour, this is what we're going to do in this scenario. Again, Southgate doesn't seem to be that person who's that attentive to such details. But because, okay, I'm not in any room that he coaches, so I'm, I'm just speculating because of how they play, how, what they show us on the pitch shows us that there's no attention to detail, right? So for me, those are really, really big moments. But all in all, you take it. 2-1 win over Slovakia, I, I mean, it's another wake-up call. How many do you need? How many do you need as the Three Lions coach? And yeah, you move forward. Um, anything else that I have to say? Um, England had two shots on target and two goals. The first shot on target came in the 95th minute. That tells you everything you need to know about this English team. And yeah, they move on. So they're playing Switzerland, which is going to be a very, very tough game. But England are through to the quarterfinals of Euro 2022.